New Skoda Kodiak SUV 2016 Review Game-changing 7-seat Skoda Kodiak SUV lands on British shores and we put it to the test. Verdict 5 Star Judging by the already excellent Skoda Superb, the Kodiak was always going to be a strong contender in this class. On the basis of this very early drive in the UK, the heavy expectation has been well and truly met. It's well made, exceptionally comfortable and roomy for seven and offers excellent value for money. Skoda's SUV could be the new class leader. It's hard to think of a car that has the potential to appeal to so many Auto Express readers in 2017 quite like the new Skoda Kodiak. This is the brand's entrant into the hugely popular midsize SUV sector, so we jumped at the chance to get behind the wheel for a very early first drive on UK roads. Would our expectations be buoyed or dashed? But before we come to whether it'll fly or bomb, we need to discuss why this car is so important, and why 26,500 potential UK customers which is more interest than any Skoda model has ever generated have already said they want one. This unprecedented list of interested buyers is partly due to the explosive rise in the popularity of SUVs. The Yeti quickly established itself as an excellent crossover, and showed Skoda's can-do attitude. If you need any further proof, that model had its best 12 months of sales in 2015 five years after it first hit dealers. For the Kodiak, Skoda has been able to cherry-pick the very best bits from the Volkswagen Group's parts bin. Under the bodywork lies something that's very familiar VW's modular MQB platform. However, most buyers won't know or care that it shares lots with a Golf. On the outside it's a large SUV, while on the inside it's a well-built, practical family car, just as any Skoda should be. There's plenty of space up front, and you can easily fit three adults in the second row. The seats slide back and forth, and the backrest reclines for extra comfort, too. They split and fold 60 colon 40 as standard, and all but the entry level S come with the option of two seats in the boot for £1,000 extra. A tug on a fabric handle and up they come, adults will find decent legroom providing the middle row of occupants are considerate enough to slide their seats forward yet will struggle for headroom. For short journeys it's fine, but on longer jaunts seats 6 and 7 are best reserved for the kids. With all seven seats up, boot room is predictably miserly. It'll only be suitable for a couple of squashy bags or a small amount of shopping. Fold them down and the boot swells to 720 liters. Drop the middle row and there's around 2,000 liters on offer easily trumping the rival Nissan X-Trail with its 1,982 liter capacity. Up front. The Kodiak is really nicely designed with a focus on materials and inlays to give an upmarket appearance. On SEL cars and above there's a new smart looking 8 inch infotainment system that has a responsive glass screen just like a smartphone. Interior plastics are great to touch, even lower down on the doors, and will easily be hardy enough for family life. VW or Skoda owners will notice some familiar switchgear around the cabin, but that's no bad thing as it's all logically laid out and easy to use. In typical Skoda style the cabin is littered with thoughtful touches. Just like in the Superb, there are umbrellas in the front doors, and special cup holders that allow you to open bottles one-handed. There's a virtual pedal that not only electrically opens the boot when you wave your foot under the rear bumper, but also closes it. Edge protectors that pop out when the doors are opened are yet another example of Skoda's simply clever motto. Thanks to the MQB platform under the skin and various bits of VW Group hardware inside and underneath, the Kodiak's road manners are predictable. You could liken it to a high-rise superb estate because the two cars really aren't that different. While the Kodiak will rarely be driven with any gusto, as with nearly every MQB-based car, there's still a pleasant degree of driver involvement. There's plenty of grip, the steering is well-weighted and accurate, and the six-speed manual gearbox is crisp. 
yet even when the mooted VRS version arrives, it'll still be first and foremost a family SUV. Most buyers won't really be interested in performance, as long as the car goes and stops without fuss, but it should be noted that the Kodiak handles surprisingly well. It's involving while remaining easy and relaxing to drive. Sound insulation on our pre-production car was good, and despite the bluff front end and SUV proportions, wind noise was barely audible. Our check spec car wasn't quite up to final UK trim levels. It's roughly equivalent to the range topping edition, though, so it had dynamic chassis control optional in the UK and smaller 18-inch wheels, UK editions will get 19-inch polished alloys. Adaptive dampers meant the ride was predictably soft, and we'd hope that the standard steel sprung Kodiaks would be similarly comfy. Another advantage of those smaller wheels was that road noise was virtually non-existent. Whether the same can be said of the bigger 19-inch rims remains to be seen, or heard. Knowing UK buyers, many will opt for these more stylish wheels. Under the bonnet it's the usual VW Group fare, so there's a choice of 123 bhp and 148 bhp versions of the 1.4 TSI turbo petrol, a 2.0 TSI turbo petrol with 177 bhp and 148 bhp and 187 bhp 2.0 liter diesels. The DSG Auto and 4-wheel drive are available separately on all versions apart from the lower powered 1.4, while the 187 BHP 2.0 TDI features both as standard. It's early days for a complete set of economy and emissions figures, but the most frugal Kodiak should be the 2.0 TDI 148 BHP DSG in SE or SEL trim on smaller wheels, with provisional claimed economy of 56.5 mpg and CO2 emissions of 131 g slash km. Our car was the addition 4x4 6-speed manual version, which pushes CO2 up to 144g slash km although economy of 51.4 mpg is still decent. It's this version that's expected to be the best seller, because it has 340nm of torque and 0 to 62 miles per hour takes a reasonable 9.8 seconds. It's also quiet and smooth, both at idle and on the move although we would guess the 148 BHP 1.4 TSI petrol version will be the best for refinement. Our addition equivalent car will be the range topper at launch, and as such comes with a healthy spec list. This includes high beam assist, heated leather seats, blind spot detection and wireless phone charging, but it's likely that the SEL will appeal to most buyers. It gets kits such as the glass-finished 8-inch infotainment screen with SAT NAV and Internet Services LED headlights, an electrically operated tailgate and 7 seats as standard. Go for the SEL with the 2.0 TDI and 4X4, and it comes in at £30,500. For comparison, the Hyundai Santa Fe with 5 seats starts at £31,610, a Kia Sorento KX3 weighs in at £35,850 and a Land Rover Discovery Sport House is a whopping £39,800. Finance deals haven't been announced, but the Skoda's PCP offers are likely to be competitive, too. Key Specs Model, Skoda Kodiak 2.0 TDI 150 Edition Price 32,695 pounds. Engine, 2.0 liter 4 CYL diesel. Power slash torque, 148 bhp slash 240 nm. Transmission, 6 speed manual, 4 wheel drive. 0 to 62 miles per hour, 9.8 seconds. Top speed, 121 miles per hour. Economy slash CO2, 51.4 mpg slash 144g slash km. On sale, now.